from thank you very much. My pleasure. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, also, anyone else? Um, we we, we um, would like to record this and, and stream it. Uh, if that's if 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 everyone's in an agreement with that, I think it would probably be a good thing to get that sort of um, efforts out there to uh, people. So, is, does anyone have a um, preference on this? Maybe you could. Uh, write in the chat what you uh, what you think if you if you don't think we should do it if or does, does anyone have any objections, objections is what i'm asking, asking i guess yeah. okay um so uh i'm going to put a few links in the chat uh for the various things that we have here um i Um, I have a few uh, slides that I've put together just to kind of like get the dialogue going. But but if we want to, um, if we would like to go ahead and um, veer off into other directions, uh, please feel free. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my uh, slides that I have. So, so um, can everyone see that? Yep. Yep. Okay. Great. Um, so, hopefully, this. Let's see here. It's loading. Loading. So, Doug, I guess you are going to present the slides now, right? Yeah, that's that's the okay, good. That's the plan. Yeah, maybe on, on I, behalf you... of the board, uh, let me say a big thank you, uh, especially to to Adrian who was running this thing very 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 well, and of course to all the participants here, uh, which is I think a very important group that we are coming together to improve the things on on OpenSUSE. I think the survey has um received a lot of perception in the community not only in the, the open SUSE community but as well in the in the general linux community uh that there is a project doing something actively to listen to their user and now let's try to make the best of it and now i keep my mouth shut Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thanks thanks Zach. um well I'm having a little bit of difficult time having it load, uh, but I have the link there. You can see uh, um, the slide share. Maybe that's why maybe people are accessing it and that's, that's why it's perhaps not uh, <laughs> stealing um, your. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there we go. Um, I've just, I've just uh, managed to display it. It's super nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it looks like it's it's working right now. So I just I have it in the browser just because I want to do that as a backup. But um, so these are these are sort of the uh, the things that we want to sort of address today, uh, looking at the steps, sort of address the pain points. This is kind of what was written in news, uh, the news article, uh, going to the knowledge transfer promotion, um, outcomes, etc. cetera. Um, so, um, this is the objectives for next week's, um, um, discussion. Um, and so we can go, we'll go over that next, uh, next Saturday. And then what are we doing here? You know, um, right. So we're, we're, we want to hopefully get some outcomes here, maybe some actionable items that we can, we can come together with as a community. Also get some understanding about what we have out there. Um, 
and these are sort of the the um, the aspects that I wanted to, I guess, manage the expectations. You know, listen, listen to everyone, um, provide input, um, and and then of course, you know, put our put our ideas that we come up with into action uh, to improve the project. And going into that, um, I wanted to address sort of the first position or the first thing we, we had on, on the bullet, which is pain points. Um, so with the pain points, um, you'll notice here that uh, we had variety, a variety of different things, but, um, you know, it was overall, I think it was spread out pretty nice uh, across like what, what are the various pain points. Um, I guess it would probably be better if we could like limit down to two or three, but you know, that's, um, it, it seems like there are pain points across, across the entire uh, spectrum. Um, so the docs uh, aspect, that's a issue that um, has been discussed. Um, and then I've had quite a few people reach out to me um, based on a few of the, um, yeah, the few of the few of the pain points that that I think are really discussed uh, amongst the community, and um, you know I think at some point it's really like how do we change that, and that that's that's is relatively important. So um, I'm also when I also wanted to show some of the other difficulties. Uh, this was a different sort of a different question, but it still kind of kind of hit on. Um, some of those points, uh, you know, communication, like where do we, where do we send people? Um, it, how do we, how do we want to communicate as a project? I mean, it, it is pretty spread out, you know, all the channels that we have, uh, which was also really, really interesting to see all um, the variety of different ways people actually, um, actually talk and uh, communicate with one another or get their news and things of that nature. Um, so these are sort of the, questions that I wanted to draw out uh, from from everyone that's attending, like um, what's, you know, what we can do, um, are the things that we want to consider. We have the, um, we have the etherpad um, and the questions uh, on that, I believe, are the, yeah, the questions from the slide. So, so if we want, we could we could probably go into into that. Um, yes. So, does anyone have any comments about that? Any input? So. Uh, just to be clear, um, which slide do you, are you in exactly? I mean, you moved from the slide to the um, etherpad? To the etherpad, yeah. Okay. So um, it would be, sorry, different windows. So it would be uh, the second link from the bottom. Oh, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So I guess I could go back to the slides that we had. Nice. So just by the way, so that everyone is on the same page, how do we organize, um, like taking, taking the floor? Do we, do we raise our hand virtually or? Uh... Yes.
that would work. So do I need, I need to stop sharing my screen and you're gonna just share the slides? So, Adrian, I, I think uh, you could, we could just, I think there's enough people here that, that we could just speak and, and ask okay. questions. Okay, okay, nice. Because, yeah, everyone should be, uh, should feel free to, like, uh, interrupt politely and, and to say anything, I think, because we are, we are, we can manage, I think, this workflow. Um, so, but, okay, so just, um, so should we, Doug, what do you suggest? Should we go through um, a specific point now, or should we, like, um, uh, do some Q&A with, with everyone um, to perhaps collect questions or perhaps collect suggestions before anything else, perhaps clarify things if people want to have clarifications? I think yeah, I think that'd be fine. I know I know that um, there's also the of the links. There's also a lot of uh, other questions that, that you had put together as well. So I mean, like yeah, you, you know, yeah, sure. I mean, your thoughts and my thoughts and everyone else who has yeah. So so just yeah to everyone uh, now here. So we have already a a bunch of suggestions, uh, sketches of ideas, etc. So. We can go in many directions from here, but it would be nice if everyone was um, had the opportunity to to make an input, uh, so that yeah, you, you you don't have just to follow what like the vocal people do. Uh, would be nice, I think. But yeah, so yeah, so perhaps myself, I could ask you a question. How do you think? Um, so assuming. Um, we we get some agreement on priorities, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, how do we how do make we do we make these suggestions and ID actionable? How do we make people work on that? Because we are volunteers, so perhaps perhaps you have ideas about that, just to so that we know that what's at stake here. Mm -hmm. um, so I I would say uh, we could record them in the Etherpad mm -hmm. and then probably put them into. Um, um progress that open oh yeah that, that's good idea that's the sort of the common thing that we could i think most of the things have been run like that in the past so unless someone else has another idea but i think that's probably a good good way of doing it right. and and i would probably i would recommend perhaps recording it on um the uh ether pad that has the end of year 2020 meetup. So I can put that in there as sort of actions. Okay, by the way, I'm taking minutes. So um, we have a safety, a fail safe in case we, we lose a recording capability. <laughs> okay, nice. So yeah. Um, um, so yeah, is there, I mean, among the people here, any question uh, about what's been discussed so far? And if not, uh, maybe we, we move on, Doug, with uh, the slides you've, you've prepared. Mm -hmm. Well, should we go into the questions about the, about the pain points that we have there? To, to, draw, draw, to draw, draw some stuff out? Um, yeah. Doug, so, I have a question. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, sure. So I just wonder, um, do we actually have a way to contact people about, you know, their responses to actually collect further information? Because I'm seeing one pain point here that says um, hardware badly or not supported, but yeah. obviously we can't actually address that without understanding like which hardware people are actually talking mm -hmm. about. Yeah, sure. So, so the short answer is no. We we don't have 
the ability to consolidate data, to make inferences that would tell us exactly uh, the situation of those people who have report difficulties with uh, hardware support. So yeah, it, doing that would have required a different uh, design in the survey. Um, so yeah, but I mean, all hope is not lost. We can, we can find different strategies to perhaps solicit these users in particular with another survey or more informally through channels, etc. Andreas, would you, um, seeing that this is a, like uh, uh, um, the, the point that you bring up, um, you know, this is also like looking at progress at future surveys. So, so we have this as a template that we, that we put together um, with a survey, perhaps. So what Uber had done for the ARM survey earlier mm -hmm. was to allow people to, you know, for one, have like a free text comment field at mm -hmm. the end, but also the option to actually specify a contact email that would then allow at least the admins of the um, of the survey to, you know, reach out to people if necessary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if that was not done this time, that may be an idea to consider for the next yeah. survey. Yeah, it, it's it's very true. Uh, we've tried to like go to the essential, and um, it, it's not exactly a, a benchmark that is meant to be scientifically accurate as far as um, hardware issue. Um, we had we had to cut some corners, and sadly, that was one of the corners that was that was cut. Um, but yeah, because and also also one of the thing is it's one among many other points, uh, pain points. I mean, so yeah, but I mean, so for instance, we could say okay, let's uh, let's try to 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 fill this this loophole, and uh, let's make a team of of people that will just uh, try to extract this information from the community. That would be a project in itself. Further, furthermore, we have the option to, since we have um, survey.opensusa.org, we do have the option to also do another specific uh, questionnaire based on that topic if we want to dive deeper into that as well. Um, yeah, perhaps. So one of the, yeah, no, I, I'll keep this question for later. It's fine. Okay. Um, so I guess uh, going, going into the addressing the pain points, we have, um, you know, ideas ideas to address pain points. Probably a better one is um, uh, the the rather than going that going to three. What what are some areas uh, we could address immediately based on the pain points? Mm -hmm. I mean, documentation tends to be one of those things, but it's also um, I think in one of my examples there on the slides um, there was a mention that the um, there's some old documentation. Uh, but some people don't really think it's a good idea to delete the information because you don't really know how many people are actually still using that info. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So yeah, and and so this is one problem we've we've we are trying to overcome with um, the new documentation, which is uh, under construction. And the, this is the problem of, of the documentation as is presented on the wikis. On the wikis, you don't know how up to date uh, an information can be, and you don't know how official it is. So you are always struggling with um, skepticism in a way, because uh, you don't know at which point you will run into something which is out of date, um, outdated or uh, not officially endorsed. So it creates kind of a, but yeah, it, it 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 feeds it feeds skepticism, and we have to overcome that. And 
for that we we we're making this new uh, revamped doc so to speak on github mm -hmm. and um yeah the idea is, is to move to a more uh, maintainer centric model so that people can have faith <laughs> in what is actually presented but that doesn't solve another issue with the, the wiki uh, which is and not the wiki particularly but in general the web platform it's not easy to navigate there are many different things you have the official official handbooks you have the the wikis the different and then the wiki is broken up is broken into um tumbleweed leap etc so maybe we could i don't know do something about yeah, yeah. Of helping people navigate the wiki and to find their way to the what they are actually looking for so navigation point huh? yeah so we, we have to basically put ourselves in the shoes of the newcomer and yeah try to like imagine what the path they would follow and make sure this path is as smooth as possible in i mean this i'm not exactly a newcomer but whenever i look for for anything even i get confused because that to me it looks like there's two home pages mm -hmm. Um, there's the regular web page and there's the wiki and both look like they have their own, like their own starting pages and I think having one primary entry point which maybe what you what you had in mind but having one primary entry point from where you then can go um, I think would go would go a great length helping helping navigate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So I don't so, know. Do we have people from the web platforms? I mean, the, the web designers, maybe <coughs> Stasiak, uh, or people that work with Stasiak. Uh, maybe they have some something to teach us about this? Or to share with us? Well, I know that uh, for the, at least for the home page, landing page, we're looking at. Um, directing people toward communication areas, whether that be Telegram, Discord, um, things of that nature. Um, this support mailing lists, um, that doesn't necessarily answer the question. It doesn't direct toward a specific entry point. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and, and I think also based on my own experience, but but in general, I think that's good. But if we if we can help get to the answer right away, that's even better, because there is lots of information, um, and and when you go to a mailing list or Discord or whatever, that induces an additional step you need to take, which some may be hesitant to do. Um, but it also in, in, adds a time step. So I, I think it's good and to make this very prominent for cases where we don't offer or we don't have the answers yet. Um, but, but I don't think it removes the need to make things easier to access and, and information more complete. Yeah, of course, I agree. Um, I mean, it's out of the blue, and it's sorry for the naive question, but do we have something planned already uh, about simplifying our web um, platform? Is it something that's already in the pipe and we are actually beating a, a dead horse now, or is it something really new? Um, I guess I could probably answer that to the, I mean, I know, I know that there are discussions about, um, changing the homepage, changing software, uh, dot open a bit. Um, and that also goes into, um, the, um, yeah, the overall design of the logos and things of that nature is, is going into it. I mean, it's, work in progress there's no um 
there's no exact uh, deadline that we're looking at, like when this is going to happen. So uh, from that standpoint, that, that that's about as best of information I can give you. All right. I wouldn't mind so, so much about the tools or technology. Um, for me, it's like um, when I started with OpenSUSE, I was quite confused confused to find the right information. So for me, there's one single entry point that's uh, OpenSUSE.org, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I go there, I'm greeted and I don't mind about the design. I think it's actually a nice design and all that is fine, but I only see tools, news, uh, conferences, but the first thing I would look into is like, where's an FAQ, where's some documentation? And it is there, but I have to search that again. So for me, it took kind of ages to just get convinced to try out OpenSUSE because I couldn't find all the basic things that I usually need to find. And then as Adrian already said, it's like um, after some searching, you will find all those like loose links that are dangling around. If they would be present in the start page, it would be awesome. And after that time, you just encounter the wiki. And let's be honest, the wiki is always outdated. And for wiki, it's like, OK, uh, as long as it's not contradicting to other news or news sources, then uh, it's OK. -ish. And if I see some instructions on the wiki page, I would always try to double check that with the official um, basic documentation and see which one uh, is it covered there and um, if it's covered there then I would trust more the official one instead of the wiki and if I have some time I would maybe also adjust the wiki and just correct that one but I think that the basic showstopper for me in the beginning was to find that documentation because I can't directly see anything on the start page uh this was kind of already discussed in, uh, in the documentation room on Telegram. And mm. I have to say that every time we kind of uh, go into completely different direction with, with the ideas and, and how we actually want to uh, accomplish uh, revamping the OpenSUSE.org. Uh, so, the fact that that now we are specifically uh, having easier access to documentation, it's not exactly the new idea, but uh, it's not like this was ever a consideration as a, as the main uh, point of of making OpenSUSE.org better. Yeah, but it's and if we if we had that if we if we had that idea, what exactly? Uh, the main page of the project should actually uh, present and and what exactly we should include on, on that page to direct people in the correct direction it would be great it would make my make my life easier uh, actually making that that web page happen yeah once mm -hmm. you you booted already open Zuse, then we have a nice welcome screen that's too late yeah but that's exactly why you get yeah, the documentation then yeah uh -huh. exactly that's uh, let me finish the sentence. That, uh, <laughs> so this is basically a, a very well done navigation tool. I think. What right. we need for the for the main page is something like a getting started section, right? right. Which tells you um, what may be the flavor that is interesting to you. How do you download mm. it? How do you uh, install it somewhere? Uh, here, find the basic steps. Uh, then we have, of course, this section about installation of multimedia codecs, which is a pain point basically exactly, for every yeah. beginner. Yeah. Um, but here we have some some legal restrictions, as I understand. We had a discussion a couple of weeks or months ago uh, whether we couldn't include this uh, in the distro as well. But this uh, faded away a little bit, the discussion. And uh, Gerald, maybe a question to you. Uh, do you see an option that we contact, for example, Kirian uh, to get a legal advice whether it is possible to provide just a link in the installation tool um, to instantly install this codex and so on? Uh, mixing up two things. Nevertheless, so getting started page, I think, would be a, or a getting started section would be a, a good start.
Is there, that's a really good feedback. Hmm. Well, I mean, we have we have the codex in um, in the wiki, don't we? Yeah. I mean, are they okay there? In the, in, I mean, is it correct there? Because um, no matter where I'm searching, I get different uh, answers on how to install the codex. At least I, I think it's contradicting. There's the wiki page, there's the forum, um, there's um, the starter guide for OpenSUSE, which is KDE only related. So if I, um, it used to have GNOME in the past too, but now it's only KDE. So the instructions should be only applied for KDE, not for GNOME. And there's this um, package where you can do this automatically. Let's see. Yeah, there's also the, so you're, you're talking about the, um, the OpenSUSE-guide.org? Um, exactly, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, we don't, we don't, um, someone takes care of that, and I'm not, not quite sure who actually owns that, but we don't. Mm, yeah. So I'm not sure about the legal impact. I'm 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 okay that it's not included, uh, and if it's legally okay to give a precise description of how to get the codex in there correctly, then it, that would be fine. Okay. I, I I I'll make a note here, and I'll actually follow up on this with Kieran. He's he's sort of the lawyer that checks all of our stuff. And having a good, you know, as, as Axel brought up, having a good, like, um, a good, it, at least having our, 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 having us covered to say, okay, yes, this is a good idea. Uh, if, if it isn't, then we'll have to think of an alternative, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Can you call, yeah, can you copy me on that, please? Yeah, we'll do. Uh, yes, yeah, thank you. Um, as well. Nice. If you, and folks, if you don't hear back for, from Doug or me, then don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> then let's just leave things as they are. <laughs> if I may just come back to um, Stasic's point about um, making his life easier as far as designing the web pages. Um, perhaps, perhaps we are um, we uh, we are mixing too many things. I mean, we we want our main entry point to be the entry point of too many things: distro, um, community stuff such as news, events, etc., and also all the open source um, products such as OpenQA, um, OUni, etc. So I don't know. One solution would be to, I mean, have different. Uh, subdomains for each of these things. Um, it, it's one way of doing it. I, there are other ways, but perhaps perhaps we're biting a bit a bit uh, too much with uh, our opensource.org current web page. Well, if you ask me, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I, I would be fine if there's just a link, even if it's somewhere in, in lower font size letter somewhere yeah. um, to, to, to have a link because um, it, it's good to have a single entry point mm -hmm. and that would be for me in opensusi.org but then I would like to see okay where's the documentation yeah maybe there's an FAQ I see that there's a wiki link already there that is fine there's a link to the um, forum that's nice too to the, to the mailing list mm -hmm. but why isn't the documentation link there yeah it, it should be something like a 
tumbleweed or leap or um, want to know more. Yeah. Uh, uh-huh. And then mm-hmm. the, the, uh, a button to the ducks or something. Mm-hmm. But then again, which ducks? Because tumbleweed, uh, s- strictly speaking, doesn't have a full comprehensive official documentation. Only but an awesome has. wiki page. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, and it's yeah. spread mm-hmm. across many different pages. Mm-hmm. So things are in under construction so it's it's very difficult to to make clear cut decisions as far as design tough stuff and i mean to some degree uh, i kind of want to also because i i know it, this is a touch problematic because our uh, web page uh, uh, www so mm-hmm. opensource.org is not uh, can't contain everything about uh, about our distros mm-hmm. so I kind of wanted to move basically all of the content related to distribution specifically to another web page so we can proper, properly explain pretty much everything about about the distributions mm-hmm. uh, and link to that page basically as the main thing that's that's on the on the open source mm-hmm. so that uh, instead of instead of trying to fit uh, at the moment for distributions mm-hmm. and uh, on who knows how many platforms uh, we would have one single page where we have informations about information about uh, tumbleweed, leap, cubic, mm-hmm. microOS, and uh, all of that uh, properly explained. Instead of having at the moment, we have uh, a lot of wiki, page, wiki pages uh, with portals about mm-hmm. every single distribution. We have. Uh, we have microOS.opensource.org, which is explaining microOS. We have cubic.opensource.org, which mm-hmm. explains cubic. We have software.opensource.org, which explains to some degree tumbleweed and, and leap. Mm-hmm. And a lot of different wiki pages around different places. And of course, www.opensource.org explains some tumbleweed and leap, which is a lot of things. And it's really hard to comprehend for for anybody mm-hmm. not to mention not to mention a new user mm-hmm. so at the moment uh, get.opensource.org is under construction <laughs> and i hope it's in a shape that's usable uh, later this year mm-hmm. so like i don't know months or two when i feel like implementing the remaining things related to uh, at the moment I think what's left is leap and cubic and uh, yeah we it's it's a lot of work and and I'm slowly going through all of that so we have a single entry point for distributions at the very least and mm-hmm. so we don't have to rely on so many different uh, places to actually explain our distributions to people. Sounds very cool. And and that single entry point would be get.opensource.org. Yes, that's correct. Mm. Nice. If I might just say something here uh, from the point of new users um, or people who are coming to the distribution, they're invariably going to come to um, opensusa.org and um, I really believe that we should be saying something right on that opening page as to what all the branches are and what the branches do Um, because at the moment the only thing you really see is uh, the tumbleweed and leap without any real explanation as to what uh, what either of those two um, uh, those two forks mean. You, you then have to scroll down and down and down and down and down to see all the rest of the stuff. Um, 
uh, and even even as a uh, an old long time SUSE user, I never go there. I can't find anything there. I, I I tend to go straight to Google to try and find stuff, which I appreciate is what we're trying to resolve here. Um, so it's something that we really need to think about. I I feel anyway that you know we need to sort of say, well, you know, uh, tumbleweed, leading edge, cubic, uh, and then what each of those do, and then then go into the deeper websites. Just 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 my opinion, guys. Yeah, I think I think that's. That's I mean the the original. I don't know how many people here were part of the original change of why we have that web page now, the landing page versus the old one that, that some of you may have remembered, but that was more of a more of a marketing aspect. But we definitely, it's always good to revisit these things and see you know what what can be improved and and I think you make a lot of valid points there. So. How to do that is really the, <laughs> the question, right? So, but I mean, yeah, there are many ways we can move from here. One is uh, how many, what's the, the work, the, the, the workforce, the work power that we can have to, um, to, to help uh, Stasiak if he wants help. <laughs> it's not for me to say, but I think it would be, would be sad if only one people had to carry the burden of, of integrating all these things and making all the design choices because it sounds quite overwhelming to me. Would, would a, maybe a workshop work every now and then? Like a quarterly workshop or something where we all could... A sprint session? So, so yeah, something like that, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what's not a bad that's not a bad idea honestly mm -hmm. we the, the main problem i usually have and uh, uh that's a little bit problematic is that i cannot write content for any website and it's it's just impossible for me to actually explain things and and so somebody that that writes some actual content for the website and not is, isn't just a person that does graphical stuff and, and because I can do that, it would be great. Also, uh, I will remind you, uh, Ad, I use they, them and not he. You use, sorry, what? I use they, them pronouns and not he. Thank sorry, you. sorry. No problem. So, so is that good, Sasiak? Like, a, um, like, a, would you would you be okay with like doing a, maybe a quarterly meetup or something or sprint? Yes, 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 yes. Absolutely, that would be preferable. I would, uh, I would love if we had some eyes on this every quarter, so we can actually uh, fix the things that that are uh, update things that that uh, come up and and have some improvements to the website websites not just not just maybe this one but in the future we may have some more things to actually add to to the websites so Stasek, does it mean that you would be you would agree to like um, have i mean to to show people the ropes of your work and to welcome them and to yeah share your knowledge with them so that they can help you something like that uh, i would expand on that because if i wasn't as busy, as busy as i am this year i would probably also mentor somebody on uh, uh, google summer of code but i don't have the time so mm -hmm. so that's not ki that's kind of not possible but if it, it's about some you know uh off and on uh collaboration that that i, I can do in at any time and and don't have to actually be too involved i would say that would be great mm -hmm. so like lightly mentor them yes very yeah. lightly mm -hmm. Nice. Okay, I'm I'm writing this down. Awesome. Um, 
So I, I think at least from that, that seems like we can move on to either one, the, the, the like another topic in the pain points, um, or we can go to, to something else. Um, I, I know the Lars had pointed out like creating another additional surveys for the pain points. That sounds, that sounds like also a good idea just to expand and extract some of that information. Uh, we have to give it give it some thought, but but that I, I, I kind of like that. But currently, what we also have, you know, uh, going to I think it was slide six, where you know we have the installation uh, hardware mentioned, uh, desktop environment settings. Uh, that's something perhaps we could probably share with the desktop. Um, um, with, with other desktop projects, um, which would be nice. Um, the OpenSUSE specific uh, settings would, would well, is it also an area I think that would be interesting? Unable to find software, I think, comes into a, um, one of those. Um, Areas that people might not fully understand, and I, if anyone has any any points about that, like you like, it would it'd be nice if you could speak up, you know? Because I think a lot of the times we'll have people go and they'll just see the package and and software that o dot o and. Um, you know, not not know the the official release or they're, you know, doing something uh, loading a package from someone else's home repository, home project. And that was a discussion during the workshop at uh, at uh, at conference twenty nineteen uh, during the uh, software OO workshop. Mm -hmm. And we came up with some ideas, but uh, because there aren't enough people actually doing a lot of things that, that are required, because, of course, people don't have the time they need to, to implement them, uh, those things kind of died. And we uh, there, there are some uh, actual ideas how to... Uh, how to maybe improve the situation, make uh, it easier for people to notify uh, the maintainers that there is uh, there is a need that this package runs in factory, for example. But because, and, and also some commenting infra infrastructure, so people can share about uh, what packages work, what doesn't, and, and stuff like that. This is all kind of on hold until we can uh we can uh fix issues and, and not, uh, not introduce new problems but uh this has to be implement this this should be implemented in in software OO at some point even though it has been more than a year since since that since that workshop this is still uh, on back burner and and mm -hmm. needs to be done at some point okay um so we had uh, other, other things we have our uh, configuration of software a uh, lack of of clear best practices you know that that's um so that's about the docs uh, yeah. mostly yeah well, uh something else <laughs> and with that we could probably move on to uh which which is probably also important would be the the I think knowledge transfer, like getting to that, would probably be a good a good idea. Um, yeah, I think we could kind of like. I think we have some good movement with the pain points, where we could go to, and and, and that's a, a very nice idea. I, but we, we can just uh, there's just something a small point that we could uh, talk about because it still really concerns the, the web pages, um, which is um, how do we get people to pick the right installation image uh, it's something so 
just to give people some context, there's been a review, actually many reviews, but one in particular that strikes out about OpenSUSE, which was, I mean, it was, it was uh, okay. Um, and the reviewers spent a lot of time talking about this first-hand experience of choosing the installation image, downloading, uh, going through the installation process, etc. And apparently, what what um, the message that this this review uh, conveyed was that it was not a very easy and smooth process to select the right image, to know which one 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 uh, is supposed to to use, um, and to get it running. So and and this in particular, the first part of this selecting the right image uh, is very much about the web platform. So yeah, we should make it we should make it easier for people to just see what they need. Okay. Um, so and this breaks this breaks into many sub points. So for instance. Can we really expect people to never use the live image because we kind of we are, we are kind of discourage, discouraging the use of uh, live images for installation? Instead, we direct people to um, the normal install installer. Um, should we change that? So, so you're talking, if I get you correct, you're talking yeah. about software.opensusa.org. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and which image? should be in and that's yeah yeah exactly so we have so we can just open this right now um so for instance uh if you go i don't know cucumberweed um so software.opensuse.org slash distributions slash tumbleweed so you have a tab which is called installation very nice so you have dvd image network image and it's fairly intuitive what the distinction means between the two, and also the distinction between the, the CPU architecture. So no problem there. The problem is, okay, you have this tab, you also have a tab called live, which says, please be aware of the following limitations of the, of the live images. They should not be used to install or upgrade Tumbleweed. And that thing is already, so yeah, there are two problems. One problem is, okay, you have installation tab and you have live tab. Okay, so which one? Because people are used to use the live tab, especially if they come from Ubuntu. Um, and the second problem is, okay, uh, why are you telling me that I cannot install? <laughs> I expected I, was, I, I would be able to install from the live image. And then when you ask the devs, which I've done, uh, it's not a clear cut story. You have arguments for, you have arguments against uh, allowing and recommending people to use the live image. I, I stopped that. Uh, I stopped there. I've already spoken too much, but you see the thing. Yeah, yeah that was also mentioned on the, the Linux Unplugged uh, podcast yeah. two or three weeks ago. And yeah, this is, this is perfectly right. And in, in the summary of the, the Linux Unplugged uh, review was also asked, what can we do, for example, to include more drivers, for example, in the live images? Um, because that, that seems to be a, a limiting factor. I mean, at the moment, they are about 900 megabyte, so there should be some space left. And to be honest, I don't know. Um, it's maybe one of the packages for this, this live images here in the core. Who could answer that question? So the official answer from the from the engineers is the live image goes through less tests from OpenQA than its uh, installation counterpart. That's the, uh, the idea. So yes, live image also gets some tests, but less than the non-live image. And that's why official. That's the reason why it's not recommended for installation purposes. But anyway, why are people using a live image? Uh, typically, they are using it because they want to check whether this distribution is running on their hardware. Absolutely. So the limitation of drivers is really probably a problem here. Mm -hmm. 
and I, I can't really follow the the argument from the from the engineers because the whole distribution, the whole DVD image is being tested. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of the stuff is already on the live image as well. So we need to make sure that the live image boots probably uh, properly on, on most of the hardware and has as much of the stuff included. And for the rest, we should probably take a look at the DVD image for mm -hmm. the tests. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they, they fail in the DVD, they are most likely to fail in the, in the live image as well. Yeah. Or am I wrong? I mean, we can speculate, but but oh. yeah, it's 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 difficult if unless we have an engineer with us now. Possibly, I, I have been using live images quite a lot, and um, uh, perhaps one of the angles that that we need to think about is uh, the live image image works well in a scenario where you have multiple machines that you want to bring up quickly um, for a specific reason. Um, so I have um, um, uh, uh, a use case where we've got a lot of machines um, and I tend to use the live image um, as, as, as a quick start rather than trying to uh, create a USB driven machine that can then get rolled out to about 50 different machines. That's that's a scenario that I wonder if, if people have thought about. Uh, one of the reasons I went to a live image was that I found that in some ways the live images, for whatever reason, can be uh, much easier to install in or, or roll out because they seem to come prepackaged with, um, let's say, more forgiving drivers. Mm -hmm. um, just putting it out there, I, um, uh, for a long time I've, I felt that uh, um, one of the big downfalls of OpenSUSE was we never had a live image. And then when it came along, I thought it was one of the best things that happened. It really did make a big difference. So I'm quite surprised to hear that um, the live images get less testing uh, because in my experience, they're usually a bit more compatible or maybe a bit more because they're a bit more up to date. Um, just my two cents worth, guys. Duly mm -hmm. noted. Um, and what, what came to my mind is, I mean, if I install, install the system, I mostly use the net installer. And this is just a, a minimum setup and pulls the rest uh, from, from the net. So the software that's being installed there is just mostly the same of, as of the, on, the, on the DVD image, plus some additional stuff. And I do not see the big difference. I mean, the, the net installer, I don't even know whether it's being tested or not. But I mean, it, it, it should boot, the live part should boot, and of course, the installation part would boot. The rest in between of the software, I think it should be a don't care for us, mm -hmm. more or less. So uh, just a, uh, also a general question to know what's uh, at stake here. So it's again one of these integration problem because we have engineers, we have people that build the images, we have the website that displays them. How should we go about, how should we come together on this? I mean, um, is it something that the board could push or um, because it's not going to magically happen overnight uh, and yet it should in a way <laughs> because we have to fix this. So. People from the board, so for, for instance, you, Axel, um, what's your take on this? How do we best push this this change? Good question. Um, if it's a matter of open QA testing, we could maybe talk to the guys of uh, of open QA. Um, Oliver Kurz comes to my mind. He was giving, I think, on Friday the workshop as well. Um, 
but I, I really don't see the testing as the, as the major topic. But uh, I see, see more the integration of additional drivers. So maybe, Doug, get, put an action item on me. I, I talk to Oliver Kurz. Okay. Right. So if you actually check on uh, openqa.opensuso.org uh, for tumbleweed in, in the, I don't know, second to last uh, snapshots that already been run through, um, I find at least, you know, um, seven test cases for the GNOME live medium. If you scroll down that page, so it's not like there are no tests. Mm -hmm. It may just not be, you know, a full duplication of all the tests that are being run on the installer. Mm. Yeah. And in this context where we're talking about image building and so on and so on, I still wonder why don't we have monthly rebuild of the leap installation DVD, for example. Anybody an idea? I mean, nope. If you're, you're downloading after a year uh, on nearly short before the next release is coming, let's sing now, 15.2 uh, uh dvd and try to install it and have issues with all the drivers and what do i know uh, it's quite likely that updated drivers have already been pushed through the update channel so why not to include them instantly in a new build of the the dvd that cannot be too resource as we have the tumble uh, stuff being rebuilt every day. I think Lubosh, I don't I don't know if he's here. Um, he would definitely be able to answer that question. So I mean we we surely can propose it on 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 the enterprise side. So on Suzelim's enterprise we we started to move to quarterly updates. So it was yearly service specs, and then um, as you explain, it, it does make sense to have something in between. Um, there's a balance because you do you do want need to test, um, and and there's also think of mirrors and download. You probably you probably want slash need to make the older the previous versions available for a bit, um, which is not so much the case for tumbleweed. So if you if you did it like every day, um, then you people couldn't probably wouldn't be able to download what they used two weeks ago. So I think, but uh, monthly or so definitely is, is or quarterly maybe as a first start is something I I I think we definitely could propose. Yeah, Gerald, maybe you can answer the question in that context. Why would one? download a software package from two weeks ago that contains uh, more bugs or in other words less because you have fixes than uh, the current one because you have installed it somewhere else i mean leap is not only used by people who put it on their notebook but it may be used by schools or others and then you you downloaded it for one classroom um you for whatever reason you forgot you you, you lost the installation media and now you want to reproduce, so you just want to reproduce something. Mm -hmm. And the other aspect, obviously, is that someone needs to QA such images if they are to be released as like the main um, supported installation medium. Obviously, maintenance updates for like, I don't know, leaf packages that are not uh, relevant to installation do get some testing um, already. But uh, if they're actually integrated into the installation image, um, that is something that is, well, that would need to be tested. Yeah. And that would, if you wanted to have a monthly, you know, rhythm, that would mean like every four weeks, someone would need to, you know, like, you know, uh, fiddle with, with OpenQA. Um, test cases for for such builds mm -hmm. yeah but it could mean on the other hand uh, every day that uh, leap updates are released we could run a test suite as well and then we are not in rolling release but we have at least daily fresh uh, installation media that's being tested on openqa that would be even better Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, well, I think I, I would go for I would go for a slower slower cadence and then see whether there there is anything that that you're really missing. Yeah, it would definitely. Axel? Uh, yeah, I thought it was definitely definitely be a good start. Yeah, and then you know, like I think proposing say quarterly um, is not doesn't sound excessive, and then we see then we see whether and, and how many how many desires that leaves open, and but it also allows us to start kicking off the process. Um, which is Andreas said, there is, there is definitely going to be some work involved. Um, and maybe start and improve automating. And, and once those things are smoother, you can go down to two months or one month or, or even less than that, possibly if, if there is a need. You could, of course, also version these things like, for example, the downloads for Ubuntu long term support versions, this, which have dot one, dot two, and dot three versions. Uh, I don't know in which uh, in which sequence, but um, those still you have stability and um, yeah, perhaps a monthly or whatever uh, actuality. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, if you version them explicitly, then you have you, you can refer to them. Good point. You say I have this exactly this. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's good. Duly noted. Should we move on to, I mean, we're kind of in, in, in this area anyway, just the knowledge transfer aspect of it, you know, mm -hmm. um, yeah, sure. I, I don't, it, it would be interesting, um, to, to possibly come up with ideas on how we could, could address it. Um, you know, we have, we have the documentation, which obviously is a form of knowledge transfer, um, best practices. Um, blogging, I think, has really been a, 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 a very, I mean, the responses that we got on that um, was was big. Most of the people ended up getting their knowledge uh, through blogs. So that that's helpful. If uh, any of you are working on something, I, I would recommend that's a, sort of a way to go. Um, yeah. Exactly. So th this idea of knowledge transfer was, um, I mean, so what is the problem exactly, if any? So the problem in my view is that um, we have many dedicated and skillful people, um, but whenever they do something and the fact that they're doing this is not used as a mean for someone else to learn, at least learn the basics, there is like a waste, a waste of, of talent and wastes of talent um, are, um, yeah, bad <laughs> because you want the community to strive and you want to attract more people, give them opportunity to learn, uh, to enjoy the, um, the technical stuff. So the, the idea would be, okay, we improve the docs, that's good. Uh, but let's, let's make the, uh, a step further and make sure that, that there's no loss of, of talent when people do something and that uh, nobody is, is making use of it. So we've, we've just had an instance of this with uh, Stasiak uh, saying, um, uh, accepting to, to like show the ropes to people uh, willing to help with the web platforms. But we could, we could reiterate that for many different projects, not just the web platforms. So that's the context, basically. So perhaps I'm, I'm the only one to see that there is a, like, a, 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 a wasted opportunity here. Maybe other people do not share my point of view. 
Well, I think that these, I mean, what, what, I, I, I understand what you're saying. And I think, you know, with, with all these different projects that we have and these, these things that we work across with other projects, it just seems like maybe dedicated workshops every now and then might be, might be helpful if, if, uh, I mean, people can learn through blogs, they can learn through videos. I mean, we could simply increase some video aspects of it um, or continue to replay it, but, you know, something like an OBS work, workshop, which, you know, helps not only us, but it helps out other projects to also further enhance that, that knowledge transfer so that we have it amongst the, uh, the various projects. Uh, open QA, which actually they've recently started doing their um, meetups on Fridays. That that's a great initiative that they've started. Um, would be, and I know that also uh, Lubosh uh, does something for the next um, the next uh, um, release of Leap, where he's he's talking about features and things like that. So that's that's. I think we're moving in the right direction there. Mm -hmm. It's really about engagement, probably. So, yeah. And one idea, um, I mean, because, okay, workshops um, can do a lot. Uh, it's a yeah, sympathetic uh, set setting for people to know each other and share knowledge, and that's very cool. But it's... Um, um, it's ephemeral. It's uh, you have just the, the, the workshop, and then uh, yeah, you have to to go in the wild and do stuff yourself. But another way, which is a complementary way, it's not meant to be instead to be done instead of workshops, would be to have like mentors, in the sense that you would have maintainers that would accept to take some time to show the ropes to newcomers, so that. They have an incentive. Wow, I can learn new stuff with that very skillful guy. That's so cool. And so it's an investment of time at the beginning for the maintainer accepting to play this this role. But the investment can be paid off uh, in a very, very good ratio, I think, because then he has less work because he has contributors that know how to, how to work. And he can rely on them to, to do the job as well. So, yeah. Could, could we partially solve this through the social media aspects that we have? Um, whether that be a Telegram channel dedicated to people that would be willing to mentor or something of that nature? Of course, that could be an entry point, but um, it, it can get messy really quickly to have messages fly around. I think my idea was more connected to the use of uh, Pager, the, the um, framework that is the tool, so to speak, that is used currently by the infra guys. Um, and you can you can create issues, and you can create groups, and you create you can create tasks and activities on that on the, on that, and it it acts like a, a kind of a dashboard where you can see who's doing what with whom. So. That would be one way. I, I uh, tend to feel that we are in a situation where we're a product of, which is very typical of such product projects, which is which have grown organically and in their own way. Um, the underlying thread that I see in a lot of the feedback is that. We need to bring our resources together, um, and we, there was mention of perhaps uh, you know another channel. Uh, um, if anything, I think we need less channels um, so that people can be more focused about where to get stuff. Um, I I still don't have a handle on the number of channels and exactly where to go and get things. Um, so I think, if anything, uh, we need less channels and more 
uh, more integration of what we've got because we've got so much stuff, but it's in so many um, different uh, pockets. Mm -hmm. It makes it very, very difficult to navigate. It makes it, makes it very hard for people to get stuff. Uh, it makes it very hard for people to cooperate across the board. Um, but I also understand that um, um, somehow this needs to be sort of done without it all falling on a few, you know, uh, on, a, on a few people's plates. Um, and I don't have solutions, but I'm just um, seeing what I what I what I think um, we need to do. It's, it's really make things simpler, less channels, um, more teaching, more um, more this mentoring thing, mm -hmm. um, more ability to um, pass on information, all good stuff. Um, but it's it's got to be done in less channels. That's um, yeah, you know, that that that's my feeling. I don't know how you guys feel about that. Well, you have two people in the chat that totally agree with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I'm, I I would like to speak up, um, but I I'm not sure whether I always understand the discussion correctly, since uh, I am not a power user first of all, and I've only been using SUSE since uh, November. Uh, I've been using Linux as a desktop for. 10 years though, so I do know the ropes a little. Uh, but yeah, um, I, just to tie in, sometimes uh, I, there's, it's not always clear where to find the correct info uh, on uh, on a new on a package and how to configure it. Uh, sometimes it's in the docs, sometimes in the wiki, sometimes the best practice is explained in a blog. Um, and I think we can learn something from the art wiki in that regard, that you always know it's going to be in the art wiki, whether it's going to be a uh, lesson like a best practice or uh, simply a tutorial how to configure it, it's always in the same place. And that makes every article uh, quite different, but always useful. Um, but yeah, uh, I, don't, I've, I haven't been here uh, in, in the, uh, during those years in which this, uh, well, let's say decentralized uh, repository of knowledge has been developed, so I don't know the arguments why things are in the way they are now. So that's why I'm a bit hesitant. But this is my two cents as a, an, a relatively new user. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to agree with you, I mean, uh, the Arch Wiki is uh, it's it's a bad example because it's an. Ex extremely well structured and well maintained uh, <laughs> wiki and I think this is the reference uh, for me in many points as well true um, and regarding the channel um, I personally don't get me wrong uh, it's just my personal way of working um, I, I feel it's a little bit confusing and way too much as well I prefer to work really the old style mailing list in a way because uh, that uh, gives me the opportunity to read them and work on them at a time that I prefer. If, if you're in a chat or somewhere, the information is a little bit more transient. It comes in very quickly and you have 10 topics in parallel being discussed and it's difficult uh, to follow up which topic, uh, which, which answer belongs to which topic and so on. Mm -hmm. So I, I see this more under a social aspect that the people chat with each other, but I wouldn't really consider this as a, a source of information, uh, probably as a source for, for, for quick help, of course. Uh, but I guess here every user is different as well. And it's probably worth noting that we deployed uh, Mailman and, and the other tools not only because uh, of the changes that uh, SUSE was doing with uh, DMARC, uh, but also because uh, this is kind of a little bit better of a mailing link software than, than others 
for reasons that it's a little bit easier to use by total noobs and uh, that's valuable when when you want to encourage people to use mailing lists which isn't easy uh, but uh, you don't have to use email you you can use uh, our mailing list entirely out of your browser mm -hmm. and that's a great thing if you if you are used to the, this way of collaborating Yeah, that was definitely uh, an improvement, Stasiak. And uh, the new mail archive is way better than the old one. It was really a step forward, yeah. Um. Should we shift maybe to the uh, promotion aspect? Um, if, well, yeah. If you go to slide 16, uh, let me throw that uh, link in. Uh, um, <clears throat> in the chat, just so that uh, people that are just coming in will be able to see it, but if you go to slide 16, you should see there is um, is it sort of a breakdown. We had comments, and um, from those comments, I was able to kind of put together what what were the motivations. Like, how how did people learn about about um, using OpenSUSE, even you know um, Linux in general, or um, and what, what you ended up with was uh, you had the, the YouTube videos, you had blogs, you had other, and then this other is, is, is what slide 16 is. So slide 15, you can see all the kind of like how people learned, how people found out about it. Um, and um, this goes into the area where we want to talk a bit about promotion. Um, some of the workplace, some of the universities, some of the conferences, the ones that the conferences were a bit of a surprises me but um for some of them but uh anyway word of mouth tended to, to be the biggest uh the biggest uh, motivator and then um podcasts were, were in there discord um obs social media was was also there in magazines so this is these are yeah, the, the really good one though was uh, the music videos from Sousa. Uh, that was that was quite interesting. Um, but in, anyway, going into that, um, you know, what what ideas can we come up with uh, on perhaps increasing sort of either one right word of mouth um, or uh, just just getting people to to shift toward uh, using Linux and using the distributions we have to offer. Yeah. Do you so want to get that, Adrian, and expand on it? Um, I mean, just my two cents. Uh, but it seems that people are not aware. I mean, people outside of the community and perhaps also within are not fully aware of um, the, the, the value proposition that we, that we put on the table. And in particular, tumbleweed, I think, is sometimes misdescribed or misconceived of by people it's sometimes seen as a rolling uh, distribution therefore unstable while the complete opposite is true it's it's probably the most i mean to me in my experience just one person but it's one of the most um, stable and um ble leading uh, release that exists in the in the linux world <clears throat> <laughs> Sorry to, to interrupt you, Ivo. <laughs> no, no problem. Thanks. So, yeah, no, no, no problem. So, um, yeah, perhaps we could put emphasis on, on the particular value proposition of Tumbleweed as something which is 
both stable and uh, cutting edge. Uh, that's something our like rivals, so to speak, uh, cannot really compete with. Uh, certainly not Ubuntu, and uh, Fedora has a different model. The kernel is bleeding edge, but not really the rest. So it's something. It's something that really goes in the essence of of open source. I would say to to have this tumbleweed uh, distribution, and we could perhaps make sure everyone is on the same page about that. It's not to say that Leap is not important, it's just that Leap is more classical, so perhaps we have less misconceptions about Leap from people. So th this no, kind I, of goes I in. don't think this is a, I, sorry. No, go ahead. I don't think this is a, a discussion about Tumbleweed or Leap. It's mm -hmm. really about OpenSUSE. Um, Doug, I thought you did, um, that that magazine where we got published in uh, the Linux magazine, mm -hmm. I thought it was phenomenal. Um, and uh, there's never been a person I've given it to who hasn't come back to me and said, wow, I didn't know, you know, uh, you can do all of this and it's that straightforward. And that doesn't matter whether they're power users or uh, geeks or just uh, completely new to uh, Linux. Um, the only thing that's really hard about that approach is um, it's 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 printed it's printed paper. Somehow, if we can electronify that, I think we could do well in terms of getting our message out there. Um, uh, Adrian, I, I I fully understand what you're saying um, about. Tumbleweed, yeah, it's great, it's lovely, it's sexy, it's stable, but I, I, I don't think that's the bigger picture. I think it's really putting the Open SUSE name out there um, and getting people to see it as in in the same light as they do Ubuntu. I would say eight out of ten people that I meet, um, if you speak to them about Linux, they all know Ubuntu, they all know Red Hat, um, and to a lesser extent, SUSE, Fedora, or that sort of thing, but OpenSUSE really doesn't come into it. And I, I think what we're trying to discuss here is how we can make ourselves more visible. Um, uh, Actually, I would say point. that depending on whom you are looking at, some people will even equate Ubuntu to Linux and just see Android as an alternative and, you know, no <laughs> Red Hat, no Zuse at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, I, I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer, but I do know, uh, Doug, who wrote that, 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 that thing on um, in the magazine. Are you aware? Do you, do you know the magazine I'm talking about? You sent me a whole ton of them. Yeah, yeah. So, so a little background on the magazine. That's a partnership that we have. Well, we we, we pay Linux Magazine. Um, is it sort of subsidizes their production of it? We provide some of the content. We when we started it off, I think the first issue was um, Leap Forty Two dot. Three, I think, was the first time we did that. Maybe it was two forty-two dot two. But anyway, besides that, we got the initial content, and then every year it's sort of like refreshing the content. I still have a bunch of magazines for fifteen dot two. Got them just because we didn't necessarily know um, where we would be at with the current epidemic. But um, it, it's it's been. I mean, we we have that. We just you know, there's a sales side to it that we can't necessarily like give, give, give it on. I mean, there is an electronic, electronic copy, but then it's like people pay for that through Linux magazine and we get the printed versions to like give out at conferences, uh, obviously send, send to people that want to promote it, uh, drop it off at universities, things like that. Um, it is helpful that you can see it in the statistics as well. 
in the end of uh, the end of your uh, survey. Yeah. Maurizio, you're very quiet. I know you've seen the magazine. What do you reckon to it? Do you reckon that would be a great way to get people into it, or because a lot of the documentation stuff we've been talking about, I think it's 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 right here. It's it's right here. It's all in the magazine. I all think, of the stuff uh, that we would. Yes, but I understand also the concerns that, that I just explained. I mean, if there are people that paid for it, obviously uh, it wouldn't be fair to to sort of like distribute it for free, but. I think what uh, the approach that Fedora took, if uh, we want to continue the discussion on, uh, on documentation, like they basically converted, I, if I'm not wrong, their wiki and they turn it into real documentation. So if you go on uh, on anything, um, I don't have the website right now, but I can I can type it later. But if you look at what of the work they did, uh, it's pretty amazing, and it looks like a really a lot of work that needs to be put into to sort of replicate it. And uh, I know that the documentation team is working quite hard on, on doing uh, on doing something. I don't know exactly whether it's similar or not, but I know that they, they have a lot of meetings uh, regularly to improve the documentation that we have. I'm not sure if there are people from the team. I'm, I was quickly looking, but uh, uh, I don't know if, the, I mean, print magazine, probably not. Uh, but in order to actually get something good, out in terms of PR, we probably need to work internally first to improve the technical documentation that we that we have available for free, and then maybe we can uh, we can start talking about that. But I'm not even sure that that's uh, that's their best approach to, to to spread the the word of open source around as well. I think uh, probably it, it's something that has been happening a little bit more lately is to have uh, podcasters. Like talking about the distributions and open source, and, and it is a bit unfortunate that uh, recently uh, people that try tumbleweed um, on a slightly popular uh, podcast they were they were not particularly giving good feedbacks about it, uh, although they were quite fair, I think, you know, on a lot of the points, and definitely things that need to be taken into consideration to improve. But overall, I mean, even if uh, even if the, the feedback was, were not positive, the fact that people are talking about it, that's what we want, right? And uh, we need to, when these kind of things happen, instead of like bashing them, we should probably encourage more of this kind of, uh, uh, let's say testing, if you, if you want to call it, like, or reviews of, of what we do. At least this is what I think. Yeah. So. Just quick words on the first part of your um, um, of your reply. So yes, uh, converting the wiki into a real documentation is exactly what um, the people from the docs are trying to do. So that's uh, that's a win already. Okay, good. <laughs> I wasn't sure. I know they've been working on it, but I haven't followed lately the development, so I wasn't sure exactly whether uh, whether that was the direction that they were taking. Mm -hmm. I see two things here. One is the documentation, and the other one is getting uh, getting the word out there, as it were, um, make uh, which is a marketing thing. Um, I think the what what I was trying to say is the on the documentation side, um, a lot of the work that we have to do is obviously already there it's just a matter of collating it and what i was proposing is if we can use the material inside that magazine um, as a quick start documentation and then put it online i think that would be really brilliant and it would be a quick win with that under our belt with that under our belt we could then go out and market with that and say Hey, look at this. Look at how easy it is. Look at how great it is. Uh, just for context, may I ask you, so this, this magazine gives you like a quick start to the OpenSUSE world, something like that? 
Pretty much. It comes with um, a, uh, an OpenSUSE 15.2 DVD, mm -hmm. and it goes right through from the newbie all the way to touching on Docker. In fact, I was just oh. flicking through it whilst um, uh, Maurizio was talking there, and it literally it goes through the whole thing from uh, uh, for for different for different types of people for the people who want to use this for office work. Uh, for people who want to use it for a bit of, um, you know, uh, photographic work. Um, and it, it, it's just a page or two, quick start. And it's written in a way in which even if you came to it with, with no Linux experience whatsoever, you could just chuck this disk into your computer and uh, work with this. It's it's pretty easy. It's pretty straightforward. It's it's written in it's written in a very simple language that's easy to follow. Um, I I gave it to uh, some people who have been completely Windows people who um, looked at it and thought, "Wow, I didn't know it was this easy." Nice. One thing to add is that the entire magazine is uh, uh, focused on OpenSUSE, but then it goes through uh, uh, obviously software that is not, uh, let's say, necessarily only available in OpenSUSE. For example, if I remember correctly, they show you how to use like some basics of uh, GIMP, I think LibreOffice as well, and then yep. uh, other things. So it's, uh, it's really like an introduction to Linux for people that never used Linux before. And it is a, it is a pretty, Pretty amazing uh, piece of work, actually. Mm -hmm. That's cool. The, the the great thing about it is, um, it it it's all it's all based around OpenSUSE. So um, you know, it's um, it, it it's it's a it's it's dead easy for us to use and adapt. Doug, I don't really know what the licensing or the you know the copyright issues and stuff like that would be perhaps you can chime in on that i can talk to brian he's the owner of the linux magazine i can talk to him and and see what um what can be done um, doc you mentioned that we are paying the linux magazine for um including a DVD or making a special edition out of it? Yeah, so so um, it's more of a subsidized thing. So what happens is when you end up with some of these magazines, and that's obviously a struggling thing as it is in this day and age, but um, um, for them to actually come up with these special versions, they need some sort of initial funds that will allow them to make it worthy or make it worthwhile for them to produce it. Um, and so usually, um, I think it was about 9,000 euro is what we've spent uh, per year over the past okay. few years. Um, and then refreshing that content is done through um, some people that well, actually, all the names are there, so you can see who who, who wrote stuff there, and then we update it. Um, but that is that's the that's what we've done in the past, and it's uh, pretty inexpensive when you think about how many magazines we get out of it. Um, yeah, and yeah, so that that's I, I'll talk to Brian um, and see what we could look at doing with that. Um, and heal. You know. An idea comes to my mind. Um, the CT magazine is probably the most important and largest IT magazine in Europe. And they are completely Ubuntu minded. Um, I mean, I just had a chat, uh, a tweet with Thorsten Lehmhus, who was the, the former Linux editor of, uh, of the CT magazine. And he thought, yeah, that was a decision that was made uh, above his uh, income level. Um, and maybe he didn't fought, fought hard enough or something like that. But 
what do you think if we contact them and say, guys, what we have leave 15.3 in the doorstep that is basically marrying the sleep products with the leap products. And we want you to include a DVD of that uh, in a certain issue of the CT magazine and maybe have two or three articles about uh, the advantages and something like that. And we provide you the DVDs mm -hmm. and uh, maybe also the articles. And then we need to discuss whether we need some additional money in terms of an advertorial or something like that. Would that be something that's feasible? Um, I'll talk with Vera and um... You know, there's there's some areas we can leverage there, I think, for sure. Mm. Um, CT Magazine. Um, I don't know what the, the market in, in Asia, for example, is. I mean, our user base is more or less coming from Europe and coming from North America, and I see a big potential in, in Asia and, and maybe also Australia, as there is there's not too much... Uh, not too big user base at the moment. Um, we know Indonesia is a is a big community and they're very active as well. Um, don't know. Over here in Hong Kong, uh, the open source uh, association they are pretty much all uh, over to uh, fanboys. So. And I think I mean uh, to be honest, yes, there is a recent uh, a recent me here in Hong Kong, and uh, uh, there are some other people, but yeah, it's most of the most of the time it's always over. It's interesting. Um, I have, I, I, where in the in, in the markets where I work, um, which ten, in the Asian markets uh, tend to be Hong Kong, Singapore, uh, Malaysia, Philippines, and um, India. Um, with the exception of India. And even there, I found it very hard. It's, we're, we're almost unknown. I, I believe we have better representation in Taiwan and, and mainland China. But I, 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 I couldn't comment because I, I'm, I'm not actively involved in those, in those areas, in those, in those geographic locations. I mean, I actually have a... Um... I mean, from from our PWIC instance, I can I can see the various um, locations that, that people at least like go to software.opensuse.org or go to uh, search is actually a better one because at least with search, um, you know that that's someone opening up a browser that's actually running OpenSUSE, so um, that's that's quite. Nice, but it is kind of spread out, um, and I could just come up with a quick uh, stat for you all. We you probably want. should ask people, like, you know, where did they learn about OpenSUSE versus where did they learn about their first Linux distribution? Because then we would, you know, what are, like, the main sources, and we could try to address them. Uh, ours were um, our, our, our end of year results actually did specifically ask about um, OpenSUSE. They were Adrian. Do you want to go into this because you're, you're you're probably a bit more um, knowledgeable on on how to explain this. Uh, sorry, I just missed uh, the the uh, your your sentence mid course uh, about the documentation. No, no. Um, Andreas was asking about the. Um, the question regarding uh, using OpenSUSE versus like, what was your first Linux distribution type of thing, and we we had the we had those answers specifically, as in, you know, what did you use before you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so exactly. So, in a nutshell, we are a population of of switchers. We have many people that have been using different Linux systems, um, Unix-based system, uh, technically, but mostly Linux, I would guess, and also Windows uh, people. So these are the guys who that compose the community. Um, and, and that's something we can take advantage of because we can presuppose a certain amount of, of knowledge. Um, 
yeah so in a nutshell that's that's it but i mean how the um how it was how they were how the questions were phrased in a sense was um very specific as we were trying to figure out if people were still using systems um if they completely like needed to switch over to OpenSUSE, um, you know, things, things of that nature was, it, it was, it, the question was there, Andreas, it was just, it was. Just not in the slide set then, because I'm looking at like slide 15 and 16. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this. The promotion motivators. And, uh, yeah. I mean, like DistroWatch or Linux Magazine, that if that really means like the Linux Magazine, those are like the most concrete ones maybe of external sources. Um, whereas, you know, like if it just says, you know, school or university um, or conference, you know, then that is a bit more abstract. Yeah, so the, the others were comments. So if you go to 15, you'll see like the breakdown and that like other, uh, that's on slide 15 is what's yes. captured in slide 16 basic for ones that did respond uh, and I kind of like went through it and this is rather general but like I tried to categorize them the best I could so that's what you end up having um, with that specific question so this is anecdotal um, but I was one of the people who said other and then word of mouth but I actually came through uh, Reddit uh, on OpenSUSE because I'm subscribed to the r slash Linux uh, subreddit. And um, uh, I think it was Mike Brown, he's quite active there and he uh, was quite um, successful explaining the uh, qualities of Tumbleweed uh, in comparison to stable distros as well as other rolling distros. Um, and so, yeah, I just wanna say that um, if, we are looking for what that word of mouth uh, platform might be or uh, how we, we can maybe uh, engage with other users who would be willing to use OpenSUSE. Um, I think Reddit is a really good platform that we could uh, try and uh, engage with, um, with good blog posts and, uh, well, whatever, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, apart from, from having a, a, a nice user experience, uh, the things we can do is either, yeah, interact with people on social media and, and like persistent platforms such as Reddit and forums, etc. But another thing is also to get featured in, in live events. So in podcasts, in conferences, um, whenever someone, whenever a famous YouTuber makes a video, get featured in the video or something. And that, that, that takes a lot of commitment um, to discover that these things are going to happen, to get in touch with the influencers and to get featured. So it's a lot of involvement and I'm not quite sure how we could achieve that, but it's, it would probably um, be extremely uh, powerful to reach out to people. I think those people could be reached with a, a big launch event. Um, if we, I, I'm not sure that the, the new leap release is coming up. If we, they, they need content, right? So if we make content for them, then perhaps they will, uh, yeah, drop our name, so to speak. I think not just uh, leap releases, but also like uh, desktop releases like for example when is there is, when there is a release of KDE I know it's not really related to us but for example OpenSUSE is not, uh, famous for being a KDE uh, distribution so uh, we should perhaps uh, try to convince them to to test the new features of KDE using OpenSUSE for example instead of using KDE Neon or, or anything else yes yeah. do we do we actually have anywhere I don't think I've seen it, uh, something like a reviewer's guide. So what I mean by that, for example, in your case, there's a new version of KDE or there's a new version of Leap, like a one page, if, if you print it, like a one page document that anyone can just access, like we, we could push it out to journalists 
they talk to the three, five top points and tell, makes it easy for them to get to screenshots, makes it easy for them to give it a try if they want. You're talking about press kit? Additionally, we probably should oh. invest in getting a, a, a press kit. So we have uh, we have our logos and, and other material uh, easily accessible for media. Mm. I think it's probably similar to press kit, but what, what do you mean by press kit? So, so I'm, every... I'm, only saying, I'm only saying this should be additional to, to your point. Because mm. we mm -hmm. don't have an easily accessible way to get our logos and, and under other branding material that, that would make it easier for journalists to talk about open source. So, so I'll just hop in here real quick. So every release I do a press kit and that includes the snap, uh, the screenshots that includes sending them the gold master, um, so that they get a chance to, to, to check it out and, and write their comments about it. I give images to them, uh, logos, um, that we're kind of go with, with that release. It's always helpful to have each um, release having mm -hmm. some sort of, uh, some sort of um, images. You, you probably noticed this one with 15.2 was containers. The one before that was sort of, uh, uh, Stasi, I, I think you ended up doing that. Uh, one with uh, Leap 15, it was the green with the, um, with some sort of- uh, the, the patterns. The patterns, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, so those things do exist. We don't have anything specific like on well we, I do put it on the wiki to download but like and I send it out to a list of media uh, that I have and also ask for um, help in getting that information out from people that do Susan marketing um, but it is uh, sometimes it's hit or miss um, It really, really depends. Mm. I mean, that's great, actually. M maybe we can help together make make this even more, um, more broadly known. Uh, as in, I'd, I'd be happy to tweet about it if I just wasn't aware, which is probably my fault. <laughs> um, but I would be happy to tweet about it, and I'm sure others, and we can push it out even even in a, in a more public setting, so not directly necessary, in addition to what you do with the, with the journalists already. Yeah. I feel we somehow got sidetracked from the previous question into talking about, you know, how can we promote new leap releases to the press? Um, if we're talking about just, you know, other people wanting to do vlogs, podcasts, and, you know, other forms of things, I think, well, there's two kinds of people. So there's the one that are basically really bought into a Linux distribution and are, you know, like, will use OpenSUSE and then try to do something based on OpenSUSE because that's what they're doing anyway. Whereas then there's the other people that will be driven by what they actually want to do, which is kind of circling back to uh, what I was, you know, like um, mentioning in the chat earlier on. So, um, you know, if someone really wants to do a cool, let's say, AI image recognition demo, and they go to, you know, find a code that does that on GitHub, and you then only encounter, um, you know, instructions that tell you to do apt install something, then they are more likely to actually blog about that or, you know, talk about that with the Ubuntu system, rather than going through all the difficulty of trying to make the same actually run on OpenSUSE, simply because it's way easier for them. I think you've got a very, very good point there. I listened to a podcast, which I just ended up giving up on because um, the only thing they had to say about SUSE that stuck in my mind was bitching about how slow Zipper was by comparison to Apt. And I thought, well, if you really don't understand the product, you, 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 um, it, it, it's, it, it's, it was almost as though they'd made up their mind before they'd done their podcast. Um, so you, you have to be very careful about that sort of thing. And you've hit the nail on the head. 
if it's if they have if the guys who do these things have to learn something new and have to understand something um they're not going to put their heart and soul in it they're they're just going to um um you know get something out the door and 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 if it's easier to do it with as you say ubuntu because they're um they're familiar with that that's what they're going to do so i we'll have to work around that uh, or not necessarily perhaps, because so. they're familiar with that, simply because, you know, like that's what, you know, when you, um, you know, that's like the most dominant thing that you actually find instructions for. Well, so even if a person is not necessarily bought well. into Ubuntu, you know, they might actually then, because of something like that, you know, like download a Ubuntu image to run that thing in. That was what I was thinking. Right. Mm -hmm. I honestly feel we need to find areas where we excel and then try and get people to talk about that. And I honestly feel that where we excel is um, it's a very balanced distribution. Uh, we cater for just about everybody as opposed to just the geeks or the school kids or the... Um, uh, that's, that's, what I, that's what I tend to think we do very well. Um, for podcast, uh, I collaborate with Atla Pinter uh, to a um, strange way to make a podcast. We would like to interview uh, um, special uh, users uh, we, uh, of OpenSUSA. Uh, why special users? Because is uh, masters of an argument. Uh, for example, uh, a graphic designer and use uh, OpenSUSE and explain why uh, you are using OpenSUSE. Or we talk about um, um, uh, marketing. We uh, uh, speak with uh, the best marketer uh, in OpenSUSE. Why you uh, are uh, um, uh, promoting uh, OpenSUSE? We have this idea to uh, make a podcast. Uh, um, it's not very technical, but uh, it's uh, for uh, our opinion the way to explain uh, because uh, um, we are uh, the best in some uh, um, uh, special uh, uh, way to work uh, with OpenSUSE? At least when, if I can say a word about this, um, I mean, whatever effort we're going to put into this, into improving marketing and promotion, um, will probably it will have to be sustained we cannot just marketing i'm not a marketing people person but one of the le a few things i know about this you cannot just do a, a one sprint a one shot thing and then hope that everything is fixed you have to maintain that to recall yourself so to speak to everyone's mind etc so it's a long it's a long um long-term effort and it's not possible to do that unless you have dedicated teams okay um, uh, we would like to make a conversation one to one a presenter and a, a showman uh, uh, maybe at the pinter and the uh, users which we would like to interview in uh, a single uh, podcast and for example uh, we would like to uh, interview uh, the founder of uh, uh, Geekos Do repository because he is a repository for musicians. Or we would like to uh, talk about important users that use uh, for security OpenSUSE. Um, uh, uh, we would like to talk about uh, uh, devs of OpenSUSE. Uh, it's uh, um, informal way to uh, 
show uh, uh, to other uh, users uh, what is OpenSUSE for us OpenSUSE is uh, first of all uh, people that uh, use OpenSUSE um, if you see um, a professionalist uh, that use OpenSUSE uh, I think uh, wow uh, I can use OpenSUSE because he's a uh, uh, professional distro where would that be published? Um, we don't know where, uh, we think uh, uh, surely um, YouTube, but I don't know if uh, we have the possibility to uh, make this video inside the official uh, OpenSUSE channel. But I have all the technology to interview people uh, with um, webcam or webcam and desktop sharing and I can uh, make uh, um, the uh, reg registration recording in, at distance because I use a technology called uh, OBS Ninja and I, I share a uh, uh, few links uh, and the users share me uh, webcam and desktop. For me it is not uh, difficult to make uh, this way to recording. If you, you have a lot of idea and uh, you would like to um, make a video for your idea, contact me, I'm very proud to help you. Thank you, that, that, that's, that's really good. Um, can you put your, can you actually put your email in the chat or something like that so I can? Uh, my mail. Okay, I, I write my mail in the GC chat. You can contact me uh, with the same name inside uh, uh, Telegram. Um, so I, I actually have to, I have to get going, but, um, I don't want to be the one who ends this. <laughs> if 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 uh, anyone wants, if everyone wants to continue, feel free. I mean, um, but I appreciate everyone that, that's come and, and help out. We'll have a next. Uh, we'll have another section next week where we'll get into um, sort of tools, dri uh, driving switchers, uh, which we kind of briefly talked about as well. Uh, expanding global users, increasing diversity, um, and uh, some of the younger generation as well. So, and it'll be the same channel. Sounds sounds very nice. Um, I mean, are they? I mean, so most people are calm, so I don't know, but. Perhaps some people would like to stay to talk a bit more informal, informally about stuff that we can do. If not, uh, yeah, there are always the platforms. Before we meet next week, is there some way we can try and get the message out about this? I was um, quite surprised that there weren't more people attending this because we had uh, I, I don't know what I I I came to the me uh, came to the chat a little bit late, so I'm not sure if you discussed at the beginning uh, how many people responded, and um, to the survey, and um, I would have thought that the, this this discussion would have been much much more well attended, but I'm actually surprised that there's basically less than less than thirty of us at any point in time. <laughs> um, it, 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 Doug, is there anything we can do to sort of um, push this out, to this out, or or 
Uh, I'll try and uh, I'll tweet it. I'll I I'll, I'll I'll shout about it on on the groups. But, yeah, um, that would that would be helpful. I mean, I I I, uh, I was kind of expecting around what we had ended up having uh, numbers wise, just just from historical past seeing, seeing that. Um, but okay. uh, but but granted, I mean, obviously, more people is better. Um, so, and I will probably write up some sort of like review of say what we did this sec uh, this session and then reinforce, we're gonna have another one as well. So, and I'll put that out this week on news that opens Yeah. The, the other idea that I also had on that was um, in terms of the sessions, um, given that we're talking to people that are global i mean for us us guys here in hong kong it's uh, it's 11 p.m um i wonder if the other session might be better at a different time which would be sort of more time friendly to other other time zones uh for for europe you're in your early afternoon is that right um, um it's 4 p.m yeah it's 4 p.m okay and yeah. uh so we've only basically got Europe and Hong Kong. Is that right? Uh, ben, Ben's, Ben, you're in the States, aren't you? Okay. I think Ben's so, in the States. Um, ben, hey, but, what, what time is it for you? And <laughs> no. the, the, the idea on the time frame was um, specific to try to get at least in the however you break up the world into thirds, trying to get some sort of um, common time frame where people could, we could have early morning, middle, and, and late in the evening. Uh, sure. You know, that, that, that was the idea behind it. I think it was, it was very, very nicely done. Uh, we are hitting, I think, at least three continents here. Uh, I mean, the st in, for the states, because that was the elephant in the room. The states, it's only, it's in, it's morning there. Yeah. So. The early hours. 